Hello everyone and welcome to The Little Blue Fly. In today's video, I will be sharing how to make a custom tailored fabric pumpkin using a paper mache pumpkin that I purchased from Hobby Lobby last year. Last year I was trying to get this done, but it just didn't work its way out. So here we are this year. I know many of you have been requesting to see this. I have received several messages about this DIY. So here we have it. It is finally here. Um, for those of you that are new to the Little Blue Fly or have been coming to my channel for quite some time and have not subscribed yet, I do invite all of you to subscribe to the Little Blue Fly and make sure to hit that notification bell. And as always, to get into that wonderful algorithm, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I always love the compliments. I try really hard to get to answering them, but just know I read each and every one of them. So that being said, Let's begin, shall we? Okay, so here are, <laughs> this is kind of funny because this is what I thought I was going to be using. Again, this is a first time for me. I've never made a, a tailored fabric pumpkin. So I thought, you know, it was just going to be these few simple items, but as we will all see here in a moment, um, I did switch things up quite a bit. Okay, so we're gonna start with this pumpkin. Um, I'm going to remove the top part using this uh, very sharp um, knife here. It's actually my husband's. I like taking his things because they work well. He does not like when I take his razors or, or wire cutters, but you know, I need them, right? Okay, so I'm just going around uh, at the top to remove this, uh, just starting a little bit because I've never worked with one of these, so I do not know how thick it is going to be. So I did a shallow cut and now I'm really, watch, you're gonna see my hand shake. I really put, look at that, ugh. <laughs> I put some tart in that one. Um, and it is very thick. Again, I have never worked with um, this particular uh, paper mache pumpkin. Again, they can be purchased at Hobby Lobby. Well, I don't know. I purchased this last year. So I don't know if they still have these. But anyways, I will be using a, um, just a different, just something different for um, the top portion of the pumpkin. Where I'm going with this, a um, little bit of the whimsy feel, always French country, and some old world. And as you can see, it's pretty thick. There's quite a few layers here. Okay, so I have it removed. And now this fabric was, uh, it was purchased from, oh, it was a fabric store here in um, Virginia. It is a very um, thick upholstery fabric, it's chenille. I almost wish it was much thinner because uh, again, this is the first time uh, so I, I really, I went into it kind of blind, but you know, when I put my mind to something, I'm, I'm just, there's no changing it. Now, many just gather the fabric, right? Like this at the top of a pumpkin, and then they push it down the hole, and you just have that creasing up at the top. I didn't want that. I wanted a more um, custom tailored pumpkin. Although I do like those other ones, I think they're absolutely darling. But for this, I just um, I just wanted to make sure that it was more tailored. 
and each portion of the pumpkin is going to basically have its own little um, window because the checks are going to be going different directions. So again, I'm going to do just one portion at a time. Now what I originally thought I was going to do was use some parchment paper and make um, like a pattern, right? But oh no, no, that just, that was not working. And it's because, you know, I mean, any, whenever you work with something round, right? It, it's not as easy as when you work with something flat. So I decided I'm gonna use some tacks to hold the fabric in place. And that I'm just basically going to go down the sides and place tacks in. And then with that piece of chalk you see there over to the side, I figured, well, what I will do is just trace on this fabric with the chalk because that will be easy to clean off, right? But to get a good line and just go ahead and just cut the fabric out. So again, I thought to use a pattern using parchment paper, that didn't work out. So then I went to the thumbtacks <laughs> and to trace with the chalk. And as you're going to see after this part, um, that didn't work out either. Again, I'm a newbie. Uh, it's, I'm just learning as I'm going along. Now what happened was when I traced it with the chalk and I went to cut it out because um, there was no give to the fabric and I cut it, well then it just shrunk <laughs> and it didn't cover the, you know, a simple mistake. I'm sure many of us make it right. Um, I just didn't... Uh, it just didn't work, plain and simple. Let's just say that. So all these tacks came out and I just went the old fashioned way as you all are about to see. And it worked out really, really, really well. Again, this is a very heavy upholstery chenille fabric. Do not suggest using such a thick fabric. So as you can see, tacks are in. I'm thinking it's all good. I was going to call this video Punt Kick Pumpkin DIY because I did. I wanted to punt kick this pumpkin out my back door and just be done with it. Be I just tend to be a bit of a perfectionist at some of the things that I do and I'm just that way and it just wasn't working. It was gapping and sometimes the hardest part, like even with writing a paper, right? Okay. And I'm not trying to go on and on and on. I'm just trying to explain my thought process with all of you going into this DIY. It was a love hate at the beginning. And I just wanted you all to know that and hear it and hopefully understand it. <laughs> okay. So I have my Fiskars here and they're dull. And why are they dull? Because Beverly uses them for other things besides fabric. So I have this little sharpener here. And this works for, I'm a lefty, as you can see, and this works for left and right-handers, this sharpener. And it did work very well. I purchased it at Walmart. Okay, 
ditched the thumbtacks. Okay, came out with um, this fabulous tool. Took it from my husband again. And what I did is just place the fabric on. I just, using the tacky glue, and then with the knife, I cut down the seam and made sure to go all the way around from the left to the right. Not gonna worry about this area where I can see some of the tacky glue because that will be covered up. So this is how I just decided to work it and it went very, very well. I just decided to freehand it. I'm going to spray in the tacky glue. Now I know it's supposed to go back, but I did not want this to go everywhere. So some on the pumpkin, some on the fabric. Flip it back over and then just press it down and then really get into the groove of the pumpkin. And this is literally my process going um, throughout this whole project of, well, of placing the fabric on anyhow. And just rub it down because again, it's round, the fabric is going to buckle. And many times, you know, you can just cut the fabric and, you know, just work it in the buckle area. And I will be sharing that where it's, uh, you'll see down at the bottom right there. And I will be sharing how I was uh, able to get rid of that little bulky piece right there. Because again, I want it to be nice and tailored. No sloppiness allowed. I tell you what, I have a whole new level of respect for these fabric pumpkins that have been tailored, that are not just gathered. It's kind of awkward at times, but again, I'm just spraying it, flipping it down, pressing it down, and you know, today, we're under a heat advisory. So out here, it's like a hundred degrees. I have a fan going, but it's still really, really, really hot. But I had no choice. I can't do this inside the house. So again, I'm just pressing it down in the seams. Now using the X-Acto knife, I just am cutting down. Just be kind of gentle, don't get too heavy handed. Because you don't want to go through the pumpkin. Although I don't see that happening because it's very thick. So again, I just, I'm cutting down and then peeling the fabric back. I wanted to make sure to explain every step really good just for those that um, have a good uh, level of patience because it is needed with this. Don't think you're going to start it and it's just going to be done. This takes time. So again, the, all the pieces that are loose, I will go back in with the tacky glue and they are pressed down before I start the next section on the pumpkin. So some is still lifted up here. So I just take the glue Spray it underneath. No worries about this bottom part here because I will um, place something uh, down here to cover up all these uh, extra pieces.
I did not use this glue sparingly. I wanted to make sure it did not lift because I want to use this pumpkin for years to come. I love the look and feel of chenille fabric. And this has such a fun, um, whimsy pattern to it. Sometimes the cut doesn't go all the way through, so I just go back and continue. And no worries about the fraying of the fabric because something is going to be placed in each of the grooves of the pumpkin to cover up. I was inspired to make one of these after I purchased my Mackenzie Child's um, fabric pumpkins. I said, you know, I can do this. And yes, I did accomplish it, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> Not at all. But as you can see, it's taking nice form. So I'm on the last little section very pleased with how I was able to get all this fabric to just lay down flat. I have the fan going. I'm making sure to stay hydrated. You can see my water. And again, one last time, I just want to share. Start on the left-hand side, cut off the excess, go to the right, cut off the excess, make sure everything is flat down at the bottom, and go left to right. Make sure everything is glued down before you go to the next section. That is very important. So I'm going to show here how I just start the glue process. Now one could really, you know, match up the pattern if they wanted to. I just wanted mine to be completely um, just different, right? I wanted a different look on each portion of the pumpkin. So I'm just going to pull this area back, spray it really good. And adhere it to the pumpkin. Gloves are a must. This is a very messy project. Now there's going to be a lot of excess because it's going to lap over because if I don't lap it over, there's going to be quite a bit of buckling. And I've just learned as I have gone along, the first couple are very awkward. I'm not even going to lie. Very awkward. But then after that, it's like, okay, I got this. Just make sure you work in the same direction. I went left to right. You guys, can, anyone can go right to left, but I went left to right. But I'm going to pull back this heavy fabric, thick fabric, and just continue to spray the glue. Love these colors. I love warm colors. I'm almost 100% positive working with um, 
a thinner, more lightweight fabric, this would be so much easier. Again, I just use my fingers and just press down. And you can feel when you're overlapping fabrics with your fingers, so you know exactly where to place the X-Acto knife at to get to cutting. As you can see, they're big overlap. I did cut a piece off. And staying true, left to right, I just am going to start cutting down on the left and working my way down. But before I start cutting, I make sure that the fabric is completely glued down to the paper mache. That's important. And then after you get done cutting, you do notice that some of your pieces are loose, the fabric. No worries, you just push it back with your finger and spray underneath it and press it back down. To do this process oh, on this pumpkin today, um, just this process, probably took me a good two, two, two and a half hours. Because again, it was new to me and I was just trying to figure out how am I going to make this work. But in the end, super rewarding. And the glue does come off. So I'm not too much stressing about that. So see, this little knife right here, this is the ticket. When you're using um, fabrics on, on pumpkins, it's just incredible. So out here in this heat, we only have like, oh, three more days left and all the true fall weather comes in. We go to the uh, into the 70s. I think we have 180 and then we go down into the 70s. So looking forward to it. Okay, so I wanted to share with you it's been cut off and you can see some of the pieces have pulled away. No worries. Just get the bottle. Just make sure though that you get real close because you don't want glue everywhere. I don't care if the bottle says to keep it away eight inches. Um, in this case, no. Then up at top, I'm going to spray more. You know, I was thinking, oh gosh, this is the last piece. You know when you're on the last, I don't care what it is, washing a window, a dirty pot, the last batch of cookies. Um, it seems like the last one sometimes just, that's the one that really likes to give you the hard time. And it did not. It went very, very well. It was the first two that I would definitely say were the most difficult. After that, it was just the, the process, right? And now I will cut down the right side, all the way down to the bottom. Now I just have this little piece down here. 
And I wanted to share with you um, just how I, I know there's a name for it. I'm just going to call it buckling. I don't know what it is, um, but it's just where a, a lot of material gathers up when you're working with these round objects. And normally, you know, when you're sewing, there's a name for it. You, you cut it. I don't know the name, but you cut it and it helps it to go around to stitch, um, to sew with the fabric as you go around the corner. Let's see how it's bunching up right here. It just really worked itself out well on this part. Um, sometimes I would, you know, have to give it that cut right there to get it to work around, like when you sew. But I was able to work this one. Okay, so we have a finished pumpkin. And I decided, because I could not find a good aged gold, I just went ahead and decided to use a um, velvet ribbon. And I'm going to hot glue it. I don't want to use a permanent um, heavy glue, just in case I want to change it. I do find that um, nice aged gold trim. I'm just placing hot glue at the bottom of the ribbon and starting at the bottom and working up to the top. So I'm making sure at the bottom to place one ribbon right on top of the other. And then I just press it down in the seam. Right now at this point, I'm just happy I'm inside. I have the fan on me. I'm still trying to cool off because it was so hot out there. And you're about to see a blooper here in a minute. I believe it's going to be on this one. <laughs> At this point, I'm just hot. Pulling it up and then tucking it. Cut it off and then I'm just going to tuck it. But then look what I do. I accidentally pulled it out of the pumpkin. So then I had to go and remove all of that. Look at that, look, whoop, <laughs> whatever. So I had to remove all the hot glue. It, it wasn't too bad. And then placed some fresh glue on it. Okay, so I have all the ribbon on. This piece fell out of a vessel, oh gosh, some time back. And I decided, you know what? I'm just going to put this down at the bottom since I didn't have any black felt. I thought this will work perfectly. Just put some hot glue on it. Covered up all the raw edges. Perfect. And there we have a sweet little tailored pumpkin. And I'm going to use one of my antique finials for the top. <laughs> 